welcome back to another episode of the open source cafe and today we're going to talk about apis and uh security to be more specific and uh, we have ori here joining us with us from pine ori thanks a lot for joining and uh, we're looking forward to you know speaking to you more about api securities and uh, you know learning from your experiences but before we get started would you like to give yourself a quick uh, intro yeah so hi kunal thank you for for having me here so um I'm Ori Goldberg, the CTO of uh, Pint. Um, I have experience in software development and managing for more than uh, 16 years. Um, the last eight or nine years in, in the cybersecurity started entering my world in cybersecurity in the automotive cybersecurity, um, which I did, which I did many interesting things around uh, vehicles, attacking vehicles, breaking vehicles, um, all in the name of science, of course, and. Uh, from there in automotive when you understood that you know the vehicles are not uh, um, they are interesting in cyber in cyber aspect but the main business is to understand what's happening in the cloud and automotive manufacturers um, moved a lot of soft software to the cloud and we looked at the cloud area and uh, which led us to this uh, to this venture of uh, Pint. Uh, when we understood that API security is much more needed I think that automotive security yeah. And uh, in brief, can you share with the audience uh, what we are going to talk about today? What is the theme of this podcast? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, you know shift left and and what is shift left and why everybody talk about shift left, especially in in, in API security. Um, what is shift left? Um, what, was it good? The, the whole a subject of moving security more to the development side of uh, of things and just for security. Um, where you develop the code instead of doing it on the right, right on production time, why it's better to do it uh, as close as possible to development. And why we don't see it happening um, as we wish to see it, in the numbers that we wish to see it, and what's stopping uh, shift left. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Pint, of course, in the end, about explaining what a product is doing and how it does fit shift left of API security testing. Amazing. And before we Talk a little bit more about, you know, shift left approach. Can you tell us a little bit more about like the problem space uh, in API security right now? Because I think when we talk about security, talk about like, okay, more policies, you need like better policies, more tests, you know, regress testing and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit more about what is the problem space? Is it like an API issue or is it like some of the practices issue? Yeah, so <clears throat> now, uh, the API security is like a huge buzzword uh, these days. Everyone talk about that. And the problem is not the APIs. Of course, APIs are, are amazing. It actually gives us all developers um, more like a standard way of communicating uh, between applications. APIs are starting to look the same more, more or less, you know, different technologies a bit. But more or less, when if I'm developing a, a software that is consuming another API, so probably looks like they all the API I integrated before that. It's very easy to work. Um, so that's not the problem. The problem is they're not tested uh, for security, and uh, we see that it's not it's not being done. You know, the developer side, and it's not being done really on the the security teams side uh, due to many reasons. You know, the, they're uh, um, usually busy and have other things and other priorities to handle, uh, except for you know babysitting the developers and check if they uh, introduced any, any features. And, and and those are the things that, uh, that we're talking about when we say API security, is those those really common issues and bugs that developers introduce to the code. Um, not maliciously, of course, it's probably because of they lack the domain expertise in understanding um, you know, what attackers will look for. So we look for those, those bugs that are introduced um, in not like you no know, configuration issues. We're not talking about configuration stuff. You know, if I left my uh, S3 bucket, you know, public instead of private, this is not the the, the, the case that I'm talking here. I'm talking about those bugs, for example, um, a developer decide to do his query to the database, taking the input from the API and just uh, put it in the in the query. These which can lead you know, to database injections um, and things like that. I think the, the main reason for that is because developers, um, they think like in you know, two dimensions when they write uh, uh, code. So one of them is you now 
I need to write the, the code. I need to run the, the functionality that I'm required to do. Okay, so I'm doing what I want, and um, and then the second phase. Okay, I test it for you no know, for functionality for quality. If some input is breaking the the my my, my function or my application, and try edge cases and things like that. But usually developers don't go like you know, like the third dimension here, which is the security. Okay, so. Um, they don't, they don't check, for example, most of the cases are around input validation. Okay? It's mostly that um, you don't really do validation of the input that is coming from the APIs. Um, that can lead you know, um, attackers to, to inject payloads or doing, um, doing things around that. That will cause the application uh, for, to behave as it's not expecting to be or you know, causing data breaches and uh, things like that. So it's so it is a problem the developer. Okay, so developers introduce those those issues, so it just makes sense for the developer to fix them, uh, right? I mean, this is the, the whole point of shifting left. It sounds sounds like a win-win situation, right? Because if development team will develop a more secure product and move it along to production when it's more secure because they tested it, so the security team will have less things to worry about and uh, they won't have to like babysit the developers. And uh, this, of course, will you know, increase the, the development time. There will be you know, like a back, forth, back and forth between security team and developer teams, uh, which really stopping organizations because in the, you know, to, to, to stop their you know, velocity of development. And um, you know, of course, we have less incidents. And I think this is basically the goal of everyone here is like making the bad guys win less because they're winning uh, a bit too much. Uh, uh, lately, uh, you know, we can we cannot think about stopping all cyber attacks uh, um, at all. But at least those issues that um, hackers know to look for, and developers can find in their own environments, um, will make uh, everyone happy. So, so we understand shift left is important, right? Um, it's going to be benefit everyone, um, but it's not you no, know, it's not happening really. Um, on the scale that we want. And I, th I think the reason for that, most mm -hmm. a couple of reasons, of course. Okay, so um, there's no responsibility. There's no uh, clear responsibility of who is responsible for um, API security issues. Okay, um, so um, is it a developer? And it makes sense, right? The developer developed the code. You should be responsible for uh, for facing it and for, for checking if it has any um, security issues. But they lack the expertise, right? They don't. I don't expect every developer to know all the you know, all of the security um, um, standards and guide uh, guidebooks on how to develop secure code. Okay. We wish that all developers would be you know, uh, security experts, but that probably won't be. And besides, you know, developers that uh, were throwing so much about on developers you know, these days, you know, they have to. I develop code, do the, the testing, uh, they do uh, DevOps sometimes, they do like, you know, um, the, the test, the lam Lambda function or you know, serverless, they um, they set up the environments to do so many things. So they could say, okay, so now we have to do security also. It's a bit you know, problematic here. Um, if it's not right to say that the, the security team is responsible because they didn't wrote the code, it's not their bugs, okay, so the developer developed it, the, the security team is like, they can check it, they can test it, but why they're responsible for it, right? Um, <clears throat> and DevOps also throw it all on the DevOps is not, it might be a good option, but uh, especially if you put a, a security mechanism testing um, in your pipeline and it doesn't break the build if there's an issue, so we've done nothing here, right? Um, also, the, the, the DevOps can may, maybe run tools that find the issue, but they cannot fix it. So it all goes back you know, why the developer should do it. Yeah. And uh, can you talk a little bit more about, like, if we talk about, like, we talk about the problems and stuff, um, and you mentioned, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about, like, uh, the scale part, but uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about, the like, what the shift left approach to API security is? Um, yeah, so... We, we know that these are issues that developer introduced, those are bugs. And I don't think they're uh, quite different than any quality issue or uh, any bugs that uh, 
the QA team would like to look for. So shifting, shifting them in API security means uh, that we need to test for security issues right on the development, right on the staging environment, on the testing environment, uh, whatever is being done there. And there are many um, three, three areas where we can test, uh, we can test in the development uh, phase. Uh, one, you know, static scanning, you know, uh, uh, SAS tools that uh, statically scan the code for issues and they alert you. And, and static tools, static scan tools usually have a um, lot of findings. If you've seen a scan of a, of, a, of a SAS, so it's like tons of findings and you usually commit to just solve the, you know, the most critical one. Um, and most most of the scan tools that don't really cover uh, the static scan tools don't really cover API uh, issues. Those API issues that uh, I've talked about before. Uh, so we have uh, uh, another type of uh, tool that we use, and uh, the SA, the software composition analysis, that one that's checking for third party um, libraries that are vulnerable. Vulnerable. Um, so also this this of course uh, is being done on many tools that. Uh, that give you SCA today. And we have the dynamic tools, those to do actually testing, um, actually um, creating attacks against your um, testing environment or staging environment and check for those issues. And Mind is a tool that is doing um, dynamic uh, scanning. So what we want to do to developers to run um, security tools from their side, because they don't have the, the security um, expertise or the domain expertise to do it themselves. They need a tool that will do it for them with the least effort that uh, they need to invest in that. They need to be you know, um, very easy to use. Uh, no, not many configuration, not many questions around security. Just you know, run the tool, see the results, action items, fix it, and move on with your life. Uh, because security, however interesting or boring uh, as it sounds to, to, to different people, it's just a security, okay? The, the, your product, the, the product that you're developing is doing um, many great things and many amazing things, and security is not a feature of the product, just something you need to do. So when I develop a code, I just need to understand that, okay, I need to do testing, security testing, um, fix if something, is a, if something comes up, and move on with my, my life and I continue, continue developing. Amazing. Thanks for sharing, Ori. And a follow-up on that can be like some of what we talk about. Uh, you know, we talk about the you know, like the the whole culture around it and the you know why is it good and the benefits. And you touched a little bit upon why this thing is not happening at at scale. Like you know, mm -hmm. can you touch a little bit upon it? Like a little bit more around what's stopping it. And you mentioned like so the, let's say developer creates this issue, so developer has to fix it, or the security person. So can they find like a balance between? Yeah, so I think that's the, uh, another thing that's stopping is that developers don't have um, tools to do it simply from their side. Um, especially on dynamic testing, there's no something very easy for a developer to run. Uh, security tools, if you've seen security tools that are designed for security people, um, they're very complicated, very uh, non-intuitive tools and developers usually don't, don't adopt them. And so if you want to create, if you want to give developers um, a way to do security testing, we need to give them tools that will be super simple and, and the oh. things that we won't require you know, too much for office time, something like uh, three clicks and, and to set it up, run it every time you do like your functional testing, do the security testing. And, uh, and that's it from your side as a, as a developer. And uh, the security team, of course, we need to, Still can monitor. They will want to monitor the this uh, the testing that the, the that the developers are doing, and to understand what is the status right of the entire APIs in organization um, uh, level. But uh, again, the, the developers need to run the tests, fix the issues, and you know, security team needs to to monitor it or government governs it just to understand that they're actually doing that. But you know, responsibility is still at the developer side. Yeah, and also like when we talk about cross-team collaborations, communication also plays an important role. And you mentioned about tools. 
and uh, I believe you know you can speak about uh, Pint as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how that is helping and what that's all about, and how folks can basically get involved? So when we developed Pint, when we started to, to building the requirements for Pint, then we understood that um, we we're face, we want to build a, team, uh, a tool for for development teams. So to get a developer to adopt a security tool, it needs to have um, you know, several several features like it needs to be fast. Okay, we need to do those testing. We need to do them fast because uh, developers' attention span is not really long. You know, it uh, we, uh, probably won't wait an hour for a security test to finish. Um, I want something that will be um, quick. You know, several minutes uh, um, at least. Not something that will take uh, too long. Uh, we need the tool to be accurate. We cannot. Um, a developer can handle like many false positives or uh, like uh, static tools that give you like 5,000 results uh, with different uh, risk levels and uh, um, different numbers of critical, uh, more critical, less critical. I think a developer needs to look at it like uh, like his compiler says, okay, L's and warnings and L's, you know, we have to fix. And warnings, these are nice to have if you fix them. And um, so, you know, this is um, this is how we're showing our, our uh, our findings you now with L's and warnings. Um, we need it to be easy. We don't have any configuration, just you know, a simple setup, and we don't require any configuration. We don't ask the user, okay, um, give us uh, a configuration about how your API looks like, how it behaves, uh, which authentication it needs, uh, what is the token, which are the resource IDs, all those stuff. Well, we don't ask the user, we understand it all from, from its traffic. Okay. And, and the last thing we understand that. And to give a developer security tool, it doesn't have to be a tool on its own. You cannot, you know, we don't want to expect developers now to learn a new tool or new um, new UI application that, that do the security testing. No, we need to integrate with their with their own tools. Okay, so um, we started building Pint uh, uh, that will enhance the Postman. Okay, so everyone knows Postman. And Pint is uh, first integration is um, with Postman is giving um, API security testing um, options to to Postman users, and the integration is uh, is very easy, very very simple, very seamless. And uh, you start the the scanning from Postman, and you get the security results within Postman, so you stay uh, within your your tool that you know of. Um, next phase, we're going to release you know one uh, like a VS Code extension IDs. And start to look into IDEs, VS Code um, extension that will allow you to run security, um, API security testing against your functional test uh, or in whatever language you wrote it. It's Python, it's a, it's a Node.js, it's a Java based, uh, whatever, will give you the ability to run from your, from your IDE and see the results from your IDE. So that's, that's what. These are the, you know, the ba basic uh, blocks that uh, we designed Pint with. Amazing. And uh, I'll uh, share a tutorial on it soon as well after this video is out. So make sure you check that out. But yeah, uh, thanks a lot for sharing, Ori. And all the links I'll leave in the description below so you can check it out uh, later on. And you can join the you know Pint. Uh, I believe you have a, let me just see. Yeah, check out our website, Pint.io. Uh, we have uh, the Postman in the public uh, workspace of Postman. Very easy to use. Uh, please use it. It's a community version. It's free. Uh, it will remain free, of course. Yeah. Cool. And I was mentioning about the Slack as well. So you can join the Slack channel. Uh, all the links you can find on the website mm -hmm. and the, under the community tab. So you can join that and carry forward the conversation over there. Well, uh, it was great talking to you, Ori. Thanks a lot for joining. And uh, yeah. I'll uh, hopefully collaborate with you in another another event. But uh, it was really mm -hmm. great talking to you. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Okay.